Hello Grade 11 students and parents, or should I say future Grade 11 students, for the next academic year. My name's Mr Andrew McMahon and it's my job today to give you a rundown of the new DP courses, the new changes in DP mathematics and uh, to compare the two courses and hopefully by the end of it given the, the promotion policy and grades that I would recommend to you and you will, ha you will be able to make a, a good decision for your university course choices and also what is best for your ability in mathematics. So last year was the first year of the new mathematics DP syllabus where and they replaced the Math HL, Math SL, Math Studies and Further Mathematics with two courses which are branched into SL and HL. The first course here on the left you see is Mathematics Analysts and Approaches which we shortened to Math AA and the second one is Mathematics Applications and Interpretation which is shortened to Math AI. So if we talk about the, the first one, Mathematics Analysts and Approaches, this one is very similar to our current Math SL. So Math AASL is similar to our current Grade 12 Math SL. And the Math AAHL is very similar to the current Math HL that the Grade 12s are finishing now. So the reason why they're similar is because the Analysts and Approaches is for students who want to continue math in some way at university and have really strong algebra and um, trigonometry calculus skills um, and you can see they develop strong skills in mathematical thinking they can uh, do real and abstract mathematical problem solving and at the bottom it's for students interested in mathematics engineering physical sciences, especially physics, chemistry and some economics. Now economics fits into both of them, but if you want to take economics at quite a high degree and it's a big focus and you want to go to a top university, then the analysts and approaches will show the university um, that you have a strong basis in mathematics. So the AASL uh, as, ve as I said, is very like the old math SL and uh, for s f some universities, even if you wanted to do uh, engineering at university, will accept the AASL and if you want to go into the top, top universities and you have a really strong knowledge and retention of mathematics, then the AAHL would be the course for you. Going on to the Mathematics AI, Applications and Interpretation, you can see they also offer an SL and HL option. However, this side is all calculator based. So everything you do, you will have a calculator in order to work out the answer or find a graph or do a statistical analysis. So there will always be a calculator available. So you can see it's not for those that have really strong problem solving and strong skills in mathematical thinking, it's about developing them skills and obviously interpreting your answer and emphasis is on modeling and statistics uh, with distributions as well. So you'll see at the bottom uh, point it says for students interested in social sciences, natural sciences like biology, uh, medicine and then anything related to stats, uh, business and then it says engineering. Engi engineering can fall in both but I think if you wanted to do engineering at a high level you would want to do the analyst and approaches option. If engineering was at a university that didn't have a strong, uh, how should we say, a strong uh, cohort then I'm sure AISL um, and HL might do the trick. Now the AISL has a lot of comparisons to math studies. However, what we've realized this year is that the AISL is slightly harder than math studies. 
So we feel that the students who would normally choose math studies and will now be doing the AISL, they, they have to work still extremely hard to get a good grade in the AISL. So I hope this first page has given you a good understanding of what entails in the two uh, option choices and you've got the SL, SL and HL option uh, for both. So if we look here at the bar model, it gives you a kind of idea of how many hours should be spent uh, on each course and which topic is, is covered the most. Now, as I, as I said, for the AIHL, you'll see that 52 hours of that course over just under two years is statistics and probability. However, on to the, the really advanced math course that analysts and approaches HL, statistics is only 33 hours compared to the 52. However, in this one, calculus is 55 hours, so it's a huge portion, as well as geometry and trigonometry. If we look back at the AI courses, you can see that the number in algebra, as I said, is a lot lower. Um, and it's only 29 hours for the AIHL, but it's 39 hours for the Analysts and Approaches HL. If you look at the Analysts and Approaches SL, which is the third bar chart model, you can see it has a, a more of a balance comp compared to the others. So each topic is, is reasonably weighted. However, Calculus and Stats are the two um, which have the highest uh, number of hours. But I would say the Analysts and Approaches SL um, has, the, has the fairest balance of them. If we then go back to the AISL, which is the one that's very like the mass studies, you can see that statistics and probability is the highest weight of the hours, with functions being second in that case. So functions is linear functions, quadratic functions, exponential functions, um, graph functions. So there is a lot of functions in that course. 16 hours only on number in algebra and only 19 hours related to calculus. So that gives you an idea of the amount of um, hours they have to spend on topic. So again, the students should be thinking to themselves, what topic in math was I always strong at? So was I really good in criteria A at the statistics tests? Uh, was I really good at functions and trigonometry? Was I really good at algebra? These sort of thoughts will help you see which course might be the best for you. So moving on to some comparisons with the old assessments versus the, the new one. So you can see in the yellow is the, the first teachings in 2014 of the old one. Then you've got the green, which is the analysts and approaches of the new one. And then the, the bluey purple is the AI applications interpretation of the new one. So you can see across the first row that in the old teaching, the SL was 90 minutes, 90 marks. But in the new ones, it's 90 minutes, 80 marks. So you're actually getting slightly more time per mark. If you look at the second row, again, paper two, you can see that it's 90 minutes, 90 marks for the old course, but in the new course, again, it's 90 minutes and 80 marks. And these are weighted as 40% of your overall grade. So paper one, 40%, paper two, 40%. Looking at the HL, Again, you can see in the old one, it's 120 minutes for 100 marks, but in the new one, it's 120 minutes for 110 marks. So you're actually losing time in the HL ones now compared to the old one. But the, the, weighted, the weightedness of the exam, 30%, is still the same. Uh, going on to the HL paper two, it's very much the same. Um, only we lose time. The big difference in the old HL, Math HL, compared to the new ones is that you had to choose an option topic for the old HL paper. 
but the new ones, it's all built in within your course and it's more of a problem solving uh, criteria B type questions and it's worth 20% of your overall grade and it's 55 marks instead of 50 marks and you can see you're allowed a calculator. All of them had the, the personal exploration we call it which is the IA as you, you might know it and these are still the same with 20% of your overall grade. Um, in the old course you were allowed 10 hours in class and 10 hours outside class but in the new one it says you've got a toolkit in class so part in the textbook there's a toolkit section which is up to 30 hours and then you've got a recommended of 10 to 15 hours on the IA. There are slight changes to the criteria, where you see criteria A, B, C, D, E. The, the names of them are still the same, but you can see that some of the points have changed. So in the old one, mathematical presentation was only three points, and now in the new one, the mathematical communication, it's called, is four points. Personal engagement was four points, and now personal engagement has went down to three points, which I think is a, is a good thing for the, the students in the new course. So these are the sort of questions that I think you should be asking yourself and asking you, your son or daughter. What should my child choose? So I've given you a rundown of what the courses entail, how many hours you should spend on each topic, what topics are your strengths, what university do you want to go to, what, what are their expectations, so you should speak to Mr. Robert about that. So hopefully you can think through these questions. Um, I've put in this question here, how much can they play the system in order to maximise the DPCP course? Well, the reason I, I say that is because I know some students in the past who have been able to do the HL math course, have played the system and chose to do the SL course because they felt that they were going to get more uh, IB points in their, their, final, their final journey for university. Some universities are only looking for overall points, some universities look for a specific subject grade. So you might want to ask your son or daughter or if you're the student, how can you play the system here? Do you need math at a higher level? Have you got the ability to do the higher level, but you're going to play the system and choose the, the SL course? You might be going to do medicine, for example, or law, where mathematics isn't needed at such a high level, so therefore you would choose maybe the AASL course rather than the AAHL course. So, uh, and it says, do JBS recommend them for the course based on the MYP results and teacher feedback? Well, yes, absolutely. So I will be giving you recommendations in the question and answer session, which is lined up for next week. And um, I'll be happy to answer those questions. So here is taken from the the IB website, you can see just some rough scenarios that they've put out. Lauren wants to study chemical engineering in the UK. She's looking at various universities. When she browsed the Imperial College in London website for the Masters of Engineering course, she saw that either analysts or applications HL will be accepted. Absolutely. Any HL in mathematics will be accepted, I believe, for any engineering course. However, the preference of the universities, the top, top math course you can choose is the AAHL. That would be uh, the one that I would say would really challenge your mathematics the most. However, the applications and interpretation HL, however it's just calculator, is still challenging. Second one, even though Javid is drawn to abstract problem solving and calculus, he intends to study economics. Therefore, he has taken the AIHL to learn more about statistics. So I think that one's self-explanatory. Self He's chosen economics and he thinks that the AI, because it's got more hours of statistics and math modeling, which suits his course. Roberto is passionate about social sciences. 
So before I even read on to that, as soon as I see social sciences, math doesn't need to be at a high level, so they can choose the math AI SL, which is very similar to the old math studies, where your math isn't challenged. Uh, it is challenged, yes, but it's not uh, not going to be challenged as high as the, the other courses. Uh, the last one, May, um, she has a newly sparked interest in global economies. She decides to take Mass A ASL because it has relatively equal coverage. So like I said earlier in the bar charts, uh, it covers um, just about all topics at an equal weight and economics AASL uh, recognises that course because she's checked out in the university. So my last slide here is our recommendations for choosing these courses. Now these have been thought out long and hard. Um, we do not take these lightly whatsoever. And by experience of teaching the DP for many years now, I know what is required, uh, ex math extended in grade 10 and math standard. And you see it's not just their overall uh, MYP grade in these subjects, this is Criterion A, okay, so this is Criterion A. Yes, we will look at their overall MYP grade, that's fine in certain cases, uh, but the Criteria A is the one that will decide whether you do HL or SL. So you'll see in, for the Mass Standard level, so those who are currently doing Mass Standard level, to do the AASL, if we were to look across all of your um, criteria A's from grade nine and grade 10, and you're averaging five and sixes uh, in those criteria A's, then we would say, okay, I think the AASL you'd be able to cope with. We wouldn't let anyone from the mass standard level do the AAHL, it's just way out of the depth. Anyone would be able to do the AISL uh, with, with any basis of mathematics, they would be able to try that, yes. And then to get into the AIHL, now only a very few out of mass standard, and uh, it would take a lot to have an average of a 7 or an 8 in criteria A. So you would have to have maybe chosen not to do the extended class but you're you're pretty strong in math and you're you're acing all your assessments your criteria is in nine and ten standard to be able to uh, be recommended for the AIHL. Moving on to the extended class which is my class my current grade 10s to get into the AASL so everyone in that class will be able to do that to get into the AAHL um, as we've discussed in class many times, um, there's only maybe a handful that would be able to do that. Uh, I've put an average of five plus, but yeah, a, a, a six, seven or eight on average in your criteria A will get you in there. Anyone in that class can do the AISL. And to do the AIHL, which remember is full calculator, but it's still a tricky HL course, uh, for the math extended, your criteria A can be on average four, five, and so on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I will be free to take all your questions next week in the Q&A. Thank you. <laughs>